Hello, I'm Dick Corsell and welcome to Community Care Network Connections. Community Care Network is a parent organization of Rutland Mental Health Services and Rutland Community Programs. And on today's program, we're going to talk about the Vermont Outdoor Adventure Program. This is a program of Rutland Mental Health's Behavioral Health Services Division and the Child and Family Services Program. And joining me today on the program are Lori Sheridan. Lori is the Health and Mental Health Program Manager for Rutland County Head Start, which is a program of Community Care Network. Emily Reynolds is a counselor with the Vermont Outdoor Adventure Program. And Brett Meyer is a counselor with the Vermont Outdoor Adventure Program. So this is a, a very interesting program and something that I think a lot of people are not aware of. We all know about many recreational programs for children. Those of us who are parents obviously partake in types of programs like that for our kids because we believe it's important for children to be active and to have structured program activities. We live in a wonderful state where we have very easy access to some incredible outdoor activities in the Rutland area from uh, Pine Hill Park, uh, the, the nearby uh, bike trails, and so many things to do. But this is a program because it's really designed as a clinical mental health program that I think a lot of people aren't aware of. So we want to take this opportunity to talk about this, have Brett and Emily you talk about the program. Lori is here to talk about how this works and its importance to young children at risk. So I'm going to start uh, with Emily, and we're going to start with the basics, which, which question would be, what is the Vermont Outdoor Adventure Program? Well, you had touched on it earlier by saying that we are part of Rutland Mental Health Services and we are under the child and family umbrella. And we are a program that offers therapeutic support to clients. Um, <clears throat> we're at Head Start right now and uh, we're working with them uh, twice a week doing quite a few trips and we're working closely with the clinicians and case managers of those clients and we're providing uh, outdoor therapeutic support through all kinds of team building games and activities and we're working on all sorts of things with the kids. So let's, let's just uh, follow up a little bit more because I think for a lot of people that may not be familiar when, we, when they hear the term case managers and mm -hmm. clinicians and, and you know what those are. Lori, perhaps you want to just take a minute and talk a little bit about um, in the mental health context in particular where we have a program like Vermont Outdoor Adventure Program. When they say they're working with clinicians and case managers, what, what, sure. what does that mean? We are very fortunate to have a contract with Rutland Mental Health Services Early Childhood Program and we are able to have offer our children case management services and mental health clinical support. What that means is they can come into our classroom-based um, um, scenes and support children in problem solving and um, we can offer play-based therapy and these children uh, gain a lot of insight into problem solving and so solving their own issues with the help of the clinical support. And it's a whole team of consultants, clinicians, and case managers who come in and support our children in the classroom. And what Vermont Outdoor Adventure offers us is an extension of those problem solving skills. So they extend from the classroom into the community-based setting. Okay, let me uh, just ask Brett, um, how did this program start? What, what, was the, what was the need for this program? And, and elaborate a little bit in terms of um, you know, how it started, um, the, the, the type of staff that you have and the training, because this is different than a traditional recreation-based program for kids. So if you could talk a little bit about its origins and, and what makes it different. So uh, a little over 10 years ago, uh, a couple of the case managers and clinicians that were involved at Rutland Mental Health um, came up with a, an, an, an added extra and a different intervention for some of the, the local local kids that they have and some of them had experience in outdoor activities whether it was hiking or biking but a, a few more challenging with canoeing and kayaking um, and ropes courses and things and with the help of uh, a wonderful 
grant from the James T. Bouse uh, Grant Association associated with the Rutland Medical Center. A lot of the funding came and the Outdoor Adventure Program was able to buy a lot of equipment, climbing equipment, uh, bikes, and a, a great number of pro project adventure and um, team building props and, and games and things so that when they were when the staff was hired they were able to take out kids out into the woods and do a lot of these experiential games and have a lot extra than <coughs> just taking a kid out for a leisurely stroll in the woods so that said there they didn't just take them they worked off of the case managers and clinicians goals that not only they had set up for the clinician or I'm sorry for the for the client but the working together with the family members um, later on maybe DCF or which um, is Department for Children and Families or, for those who don't know. Yeah, or, or working off of what many of the you know special education goals might have, might have been incorporated throughout uh, with with the case managers and clinicians and so we um, have started, Emily and I started I mean, a few years ago, but a lot of the staff that was there uh, have moved on uh, doing other things in their lives and we've continued the things and tried to make it grow and continue to work off of um, the clinicians and case managers goals for the clients. So who's eligible for a program like this? Obviously this is a mental health agency that's offering these services. Lori described a little bit about the, mm -hmm. the, the clinicians and the case managers. So who would be eligible for a program like this? Uh, is it your typical kid on the street or are these children that um, uh, you know are you encounter in other work that's done within the agency and how do they get identified as this perhaps is a program that they may find beneficial? We're working off of <laughs> We're working hand in hand with case managers and clinicians and to be eligible for the outdoor adventure program, number one, you need to be a client of the child and family services and be involved in services in the agency. And then if the team feels there's a need for maybe a young child to do a little extra, a little learn, a little, you know, a learning curve outside of the box, maybe outside of the classroom or outside of just going to go into someone's office for some clinical work. Um, they might refer them to Emily and myself to maybe do some problem solving, to work on social skills um, in, a, in a different setting. Okay, let's switch back, switch gears, so to speak. Um, and you were mountain biking today with some kids, so actually you were switching gears a lot today. Yes, we were switching Well, let's do it in the so context of this show. Sure. And talk a little bit about what a, what a typical outing looks like and and some of the places that you go and if you could talk a little bit about how this may be different than perhaps what a, a traditional rec program might sure. be doing. Sure. Um, you know, <clears throat> like I said before, we work very closely with the case managers and clinicians and a lot of times how Brett and I decide where we're going to go and what we're going to do for the day with each group depends on who we have and, and what their goals are for that day or that week or how they've been doing um, in the classroom. You know, we might be working with a school group who, you know, they've been, they've been having trouble um, bonding with their peers. So we will specifically choose a venue to go at where we might work on team building initiatives and problem solving games for a majority of the time. And, um, <clears throat> That's, that's something that, you know, Brett and I work very diligently at and, and try and make sure that we're, we're doing what the school counselors and the clinicians and the case managers are kind of looking for with these kids. Um, and, you know, as far as what makes it different than a rec program is we're, we're working on specific things that these kids need. Um, it, it's been, you know, it's been something that has been, uh, you know, brought to our attention that certain kids within a group need to work on certain things and, and that's that's what we're here to do. Talk a little bit and I just have, have you follow up on this Emily because you were talking about the you know the differences with a um, with, from a traditional recreation mm -hmm. program and the goals that these kids may have. Um, 
What, what would be, for example, um, a goal for uh, um, a young person that recreation is the antidote? In other mm -hmm. words, sure. the, the fact that yep. you're using outdoor structured, well, not all the, always outdoor, but recreation structured activities to change yeah. behaviors or uh, emotions or whatever so that a young person can function more successfully at home and school and their community. Can you talk a little bit about what, how you use recreation for that? Well, I'll give you a good example. Um, th this past week, we, we've been working with two different age groups. Brett's been with a group of younger boys, and I have been with a group of older boys, and we, we've each had uh, respite providers with us as well. And, um, y you know, we, we might have uh, one certain client that um, has issues uh, making friends or keeping friends or seems to get frustrated easily. So there are certain games and stuff that we do outside recreationally which push them to get through something that's difficult for them or seems impossible or that they can't work with their group to get it done. But in the end, they do get it done and they do push through it and, and they, can, they can succeed. They don't, they, they don't give up. They don't get frustrated and walk away. You know, we support them through that so that they can complete the problem solving initiative or the team building activity that seems like there's no chance that this group can complete it, but they do. And, and you, you know, the smiles on their faces and you know, they, it's like, you know, they've conquered the world. It's, it's really great. So the recreation is kind of a concrete way that you get them to focus, yes. such as what would happen in a, in a classroom setting where, a, right. for example, a special educator or a traditional educator would focus that child or the young person on activities that help promote a certain, you know, toward a certain goal. Yeah. What, you obviously have training in this area. Um, I know you both have a lot of experience in, in recreation and you're both avid uh, recreation enthusiasts, outdoor enthusiasts, um, know this area very well. But you must have to have something a little bit different in addition to the love of the outdoors and the love of, uh, of, of recreation. Brett? Well, <laughs> Emily and I um, need to be certified in a wilderness first aid. Um, and, and we also need to be um, available and accessible throughout, throughout every year to continue trainings, you know, whether it's going to be a canoeing, kayaking training, a lifeguarding training. For example, today you talked about how Emily <coughs> went um, biking. Well, I, I took a group fishing uh, and the group that was with me was able to go swimming because I'm a certified lifeguard, whereas Emily's group wouldn't have been able to because she doesn't have the lifeguarding as of yet. But then we have trainings in, in um, fixing fixing up our bikes, the mountain bikes that she had there, whereas we we don't have to send it off to to the, the shop to get it fixed up. Uh, and then, uh, of, of course, we're working off of um, many of the trainings we have around mental health for confidentiality and, and, and numerous things that we have to go through just for an ori orientation. Uh, and then years of experience just being out and about in the area. and. I know for myself, and um, I, I believe for Emily as well, just growing up in the area, we know a lot of spots that maybe certain people aren't aware of in order to take kids to do a lot of these recreation things. Um, and so we've got those in a, a venue guide. Uh, so there are places that we take the kids. If, if there's a place that isn't in our venue guide, Emily and I need to do a little research and call it a recon mission, I guess you would say, when we have the time to go to the place to make sure that it's safe uh, and, and it's going to be an appropriate place to do adventure programming. And what about the, the, the clinical type training? Because obviously you uh, work with populations that um, may present with challenging behaviors, um, other um, you know, emotional considerations that you need to be cognizant of and be able to deal with effectively when you're out somewhere. And particular uh, out somewhere that you know getting back is not a five minute you know deal mm -hmm. so what 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 are some of the type of, uh, of, of training and education you have to have to be able to accommodate um, working in that environment well we see our supervisor Doug um, 
we try to see him once a week, and, and he's a great help with stuff like this. Um, I know myself, I have a BS in human development and family studies, so the majority of my schooling in college was around this sort of thing, and I believe Brett's was as well. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, it, it's, we, we go to specific trainings every now and then. We have this, this thing at, at Rutland Mental Health called uh, NetSmart U. And we have to we have to go online and we have to sit in front of a computer and do quite a bit of training and um, we're meeting with all the clinicians and case managers more than just about seeing clients and a lot of this stuff comes up and we kind of feed it off of each other and you know rehash some incidents that may have happened before and, and how we could deal with them better and, and that kind of thing. That's great. I want to talk with with Lori. Uh, Rutland County Head Start is a uh, school readiness, social emotional development program for children ages three to five uh, from low income <coughs> families. Uh, it is a program that has uh, been long standing mm -hmm. in the Rutland region, but it has evolved a lot um, mm -hmm. over the years, in particular, to have distinct competencies and being able to meet the needs of children that, that do have difficult family situations, tremendous stressors in their life, um, some children with. with emotional uh, issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, you oversee the health and mental health aspects of this programming, Correct. which is quite extensive. Mm -hmm. And you were one of, uh, you were very instrumental in um, having the Vermont Outdoor Program work with this young population. So I'd like okay. you to talk a, a little bit about um, how does the Head Start Program work with the Vermont Outdoor Adventure Program? and, and sure. Uh, what you, why a child, for example, that um, you perhaps would be, uh, you know, working with would get referred to Brett and Emily? Sure. We are very fortunate that all of the children enrolled in our program have um, case management or mental health services available to them. So it's a huge supplement to our program. We, when a child is open to case management services, then they are available to go on the Vermont Outdoor Adventure Program. And Brett and Emily support the goals that the family and the case managers or clinicians have developed with, with together for the child. So that's really important that the families are involved in that aspect. Many times these children come into our program and they do not have the socially acceptable skills that they need to be successful in the community or in a school setting. So we're working really strongly on those things and we help them learn problem solving skills such as sharing, um, learning when to take turns, how to ask a teacher for help. Those types of things are really important to be able to move on to kindergarten and be successful in school. So the great thing about the Vermont Outdoor Adventure Program is that they take a small group with them outside of the classroom, which is just a change of atmosphere for a child, and they work on those same skills with these children so that they learn how to apply it in the community or in the wilderness or with other kids that they've never seen or worked with before or who may be in other classrooms. So they continue to support the same goals that the clinician, the teacher, and the parents would like to see um, that the child gets stronger in. And so that's really important for them to be able to move on. And do, do you find a, a program like this where the children are outside of, uh, of a classroom environment uh, in smaller groups with, with trained staff mm -hmm. to be sometimes <clears throat> even more effective uh, than yes. perhaps some other type of intervention for yes. particular kids? Absolutely. It's like a switch flips when Brett and Emily come in to get the kids. The switch flips and it's like you see this big huge smile and the kids get really excited. You know, what are we going to do today? Who's going to be with us? And um, it's really great to see them be able to have that excitement and to go out um, into the field with them. In the classroom, we have 16 kids in most classrooms and um, some present with very challenging behaviors and many of them are the ones that we refer to Brett and Emily who go out on the outings. And because it is done on a smaller scale and more individualized in that program, 
um, the children look forward to that and they seem to respond very well to that type of atmosphere. And so that alone is huge. Not to mention the healthy aspect of it, since I do oversee the health piece. Um, that's just great that those kids are getting out, they're running, they're jumping, they're swimming, whatever it may be, to get that energy out. And they're also reaping the health rewards from that. So, uh, it's, a, so it's a great double bonus. Yeah, I think that's, that's very important that you mm -hmm. pointed that out, because yes. there certainly is that added element to this program. Mm -hmm. And I know that, that the Head Start program places a great emphasis on physical activity. Yes. I know you oversee a program called I Am Moving, I Am Learning, yes. which is designed to work with young children to kind of instill in them uh, a, a sense of the benefits of, yes. of physical activity for mm -hmm. lifelong lifelong right. health. Right. Um, I want to talk with Brenna or Emily in terms of the, the, the age groups that, that you work with. Now, Lori uh, oversees programming for children that are, that are young. Right. Uh, what's, what, what are generally the age groupings that you work with? You probably don't mix a three-year-old with a 16-year-old. <laughs> so what are some of the groups that you work with? That would actually not necessar necessarily be true. If, if a case-by-case -case scenario, if the team felt like it was, it was uh, a good fit, Mm -hmm. and we could maybe have a, a big brother, big sister, we would do something like that. Mm -hmm. And we have in the past in, in, in certain schools. But uh, we're obviously talking about Head Start. We, we mm -hmm. work the Head Start kids. So we have children uh, age ranging from three uh, and honestly all the way up until age 21. Uh, we, we have a wide spectrum of, of, of age where we work with uh, the youth and transition population, which is also affiliated, affiliated with Rutland Mental Health uh, through the jobs program. Uh, and we head down to the center uh, and have kids that are in that program sign up. And once a month, we take them on an outing. Um, and it, it could be four or five, six kids. And they could be ranging from is it 16? 16. 16 to 21. So on any given week, we may have a head start group on a Monday. Uh, and then the next day, we could be working with a 20 year old and then anywhere in between. So we ha have been involved with numerous age groups. Let me ask you, uh, given the fact that this is a Vermont outdoor adventure program and not a Vermont indoor adventure program, but given the fact that our weather's always beautiful here and we never have any weather that's inclement, I how agree. do you deal with the variations in, in, in weather? I mean, this past winter, um, we had frequent snowstorms and we had a lot of snow and this spring sun is a very scarce commodity mm -hmm. so how do you deal with with all of that when you have work to be done children to be seen uh, we, we roll with the weather and sometimes it can be a, a blessing in disguise um, I, I off the top of my head I know that this one school group that we were working with was kind of um, struggling as a group and, and they needed to work on their group dynamic and um, we were going to go for a hike that day and, and quite a bit of a hike but uh, it was pouring so what we did was we went to the Pittsford Rec and they have a huge gazebo and we were under that gazebo in the pouring rain uh, for five hours Just five hours yeah doing team building games and it was absolutely phenomenal uh, so we stayed dry but you know the the rain forced us to be in a group very close together doing team building games for an hour instead of walking in a single file line hiking to to maybe a shelter which could have been our destination but we were we were working very closely with each other for five hours on building positive relationships and group dynamic so you, you ask on how weather might uh, maybe alter or change our plans um, on a specific day, we might change a little bit, but as far as the weather, we're braving it, and that's part of challenging these kids to to deal with what Vermont weather, to, to deal with what is thrown at them, because us as adults, we, we need to do it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so the children go out with us in all weather, um, below freezing, uh, all the way to today, being close to 80 degrees, but with that, we're making sure on the safety side of it that we have the sunscreen the bug spray and, and extra water and finding shade throughout the day but i would think i would i would say some of uh, our our funnest and best group outings would would have been in in the winter at a few locations we're thinking of where we'll build an igloo or a quincy hut um, and 
to have kids be so cold in the beginning and not want to go in the morning to where they don't want to leave where we are at the end of the trip is, is excellent because they forget about the frustration on it being cold and they just want to work together. And, and then also want to go back to the same venue over and over, even in really cold, inclement weather. We hear a lot about building resiliency. I know in the, the, your programming, mm -hmm. Lori, resiliency in a young child is very important because right. as these guys have just said, being able to kind of take whatever comes at you and be able to land on your feet is, is essential. So mm -hmm. that, that makes a lot of sense. In the last few minutes, could you perhaps share, without using names, of course, uh, you know, a success story of a, of a young person, a child, whatever, that uh, has received significant benefit from the Vermont Outdoor Adventure Program? Well, I have one in mind. Um, <clears throat> she's a client of ours, and um, you know, we started working with her in October, and she was afraid of just about anything. Uh, when, when we go for little hikes, she didn't want to walk over sticks. If there was a down tree, she didn't want to walk over the log. And so we supported her through all that. And uh, you know, eight months later. There, I remember this one trip where I looked across the pond that we were at and she was by herself walking over a bridge that she never, ever would have done eight months ago. And, and in that same day, we actually caught a fish and asked if anybody would like to hold it. And she was the only, one, only that, one she was the only one that raised her hand and said, I would love to hold it. And, and this little girl held this fish and it was just, I, both Brett and I were absolutely amazed that she was the one that raised her hand and said, I would like to hold this fish. It was great. It was wonderful. Laura, do you have any, any examples, perhaps, or children that, you, that you've noticed improvement mm -hmm. in uh, behavior or uh, how they interact with their peers, perhaps, with, with this program? Um, along the same lines of what Emily was sharing, I have seen many children who were just afraid of being outdoors and experiencing new things, and that's really key for them to be able to get out there and overcome that. It increases their confidence and their self-esteem, and that's really the biggest thing that I see, and then they come back and they're able to share those stories with their friends and which that then builds some positive relationships for them in the classroom that they can share those things that they've overcome. Yeah, I think that that would be important. And I and also, uh, if you can instill in in you know young children or young adults the importance of lifelong physical activity. I mean, obviously, this particular program has um, a large mental health component because you are working uh, you know, with, with individuals who have those mm -hmm. needs, uh, but being, I would imagine that being able to show them that you know, where they live they can take advantage of so many wonderful activities and many of us use recreation to reduce stress, um, you know, which, which improves health. So, uh, that certainly is a, a big benefit and you know working with young children who mm -hmm. uh, things like team building uh, <clears throat> are, are very important because a child before they enter school their ability to um, be respectful of other kids uh, to be able to listen to instruction to feel part of a group uh, that's essential mm -hmm. and some of that work happens in a classroom but a lot of it often happens um, in, in programs like this so uh, it, it's great to have a program like the Vermont Outdoor Adventure Program I don't think a lot of people probably know about it mm -hmm. uh, so we are certainly thankful that uh, that you're here to talk about it so I would uh, like to thank our, our guest today uh, Lori Sheridan uh, from uh, Rutland County Head Start and Emily Reynolds and Brett Meyer from uh, Rutland Mental Health Services and the Vermont Outdoor Adventure Program. I want to thank you for talking about this and, and we certainly look forward to hearing more about this great program and, and the work that you do and the benefits it has for the youth in our region. I'm Dick Corsell and you have been watching Community Care Network Connections. <laughs>